All right, let's uh, dive into the deep end of Hollywood. We've got a stack of articles about the recent Academy Museum Gala, and trust me, this isn't just about who wore what, this event. It's a whole different kind of red carpet story. Yeah, it's like Hollywood's own annual report hidden in plain sight. Mm. We're talking about decoding the guest list, the honorees, even the seating chart, all to understand what's really going on behind the scenes in the film industry. So picture this Los Angeles, October 19th, the Academy Museum Gala, fourth year running, and the guest list, forget A-list, we're talking the who's who of Hollywood royalty, Nicole Kidman, Selena Gomez, even Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan together again. But remember, this isn't just a night out for these stars. This gala is a carefully curated event, and every detail from the guest list to the millions of dollars raised tells a story. We're talking upwards of $11 million this year, going straight to the Academy Museum to support their work in film preservation, education, and exhibitions. $11 million. That's a lot of movie tickets. But you're right. It's not just about the money, is it? It's about who shows up and what it means. Some people are even paying big bucks for a seat at this table. Exactly. And that tells you a lot about the true currency at play here, Influence. Yeah. Sure, supporting the arts is fantastic, but this gala is also a prime networking opportunity. Think studio execs rubbing shoulders with rising stars, directors pitching their next big ideas, all while raising a glass to cinema. It's like the ultimate Hollywood power play disguised as a glamorous night out. Speaking of which, can we talk about the Kardashian-Jenners for a second? Kylie Kendall and Kim, all in vintage nerve. Teary Mugler. Chloe even jokingly commented on Instagram about being mad she missed out. They know how to steal the show. They absolutely do. And let's be real, this wasn't just a family fashion show. This was a strategic move. Remember Kylie's caption on Instagram, Terry Mugler 1998 Couture for a Very Special Sister Night. Huh. They're leveraging this event to solidify their place, not just in reality TV, but in the fashion and entertainment worlds. And it's working. They've uh, they've successfully bridged the gap from reality TV to high fashion. Remember, these are savvy businesswomen who understand the power of a well-placed appearance. They know that a single photo from a night like this can generate buzz, boost their brand, and ultimately translate into some serious influence. Mm -hmm. But they weren't the only ones working the room. We also saw Ariana Grande and Cynthia Erivo, the stars of the upcoming Wicked film, which is sure to be huge. Oh, absolutely. That's a smart move, especially with award season just around the corner. Speaking oh. of which, Denis Villeneuve, the director of Dune 2, was also there. I bet he's hoping for a repeat of the first film's award success. This gala is a great way to subtly remind everyone in Hollywood about your work. Exactly. It's all part of the game. But let's move from the attendees to the night's main event, the honorees. Yeah. We had Paul Mescal, Rita Moreno, and Quentin Tarantino. What a lineup. Each one reflecting a different facet of Hollywood's legacy and future. I was particularly struck by Paul Mescal receiving the Vantage Award. For those who don't know, he's a relatively new face, but he's been making waves with his incredibly raw and powerful performances. And that's the key here. The Vantage Award isn't just about recognizing talent. It's about celebrating artists who are pushing boundaries and challenging traditional narratives. Mescal's recognition suggests that Hollywood is increasingly interested in those kinds of stories. It's almost like a changing of the guard, isn't it? You have these rising stars challenging the status quo, and then you have a legend like Rita Moreno receiving the Icon Award to talk about a trailblazer. Absolutely. Rita Moreno's career spans decades, from West Side Story to One Day at a Time. She's been a powerful advocate for diversity and representation in an industry that hasn't always been welcoming. This award is a testament to her enduring legacy and her impact on generations of artists. And then there's Quentin Tarantino receiving the Luminary Award. He's a he's such a unique figure in Hollywood, a true auteur. He even donated his original handwritten script for Pulp Fiction to the museum. Can you imagine holding that piece of film history? It really speaks to the impact he's had. Tarantino's work is often controversial, pushing boundaries and challenging audiences, but love him or hate him, there's no denying his influence on cinema. It seems like a common thread is emerging here, a focus on change makers and rule breakers, Paul Mescal with his raw emotional performances, Rita Moreno breaking down barriers, and Quentin Tarantino rewriting the rules of storytelling. It's like this gala is a microcosm of the larger forces at play in Hollywood right now. This push and pull between the old guard and the new, between traditional storytelling and fresh perspectives. You have these established figures like Spielberg and Kidman who represent the Hollywood establishment. And then you have these rising stars and artists who are pushing for more inclusivity and challenging the norms. It really makes you wonder, doesn't it? Is Hollywood truly changing? Or is this just a carefully curated performance? Are we witnessing a real shift in power or just a temporary embrace of what's trendy? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And I don't think there's an easy answer. 
But what we can say is that events like the Academy Museum Gala give us a glimpse behind the curtain. They offer valuable clues about the direction Hollywood might be heading and the conversations that are shaping the future of film. So the next time you see those glamorous photos from an event like this, remember there's always more to the story than meets the eye. It's not just about the fashion, the parties, or the red carpet moments. It's about the power dynamics, the evolving narratives, and the constant tension between tradition and change. It's about the future of film itself.